With Hashem's loving grace, this is Laser Brody. Thank you, Hashem, with the privilege of being back. Nechut Chesed Yeshiva, Holy Savior Yerushalayim, with another one of our series, Amunah series lessons, based on the teachings of our beloved and esteemed rabbi and spiritual guide, Rav Shalom Arush. Hashem bless him always. Today's lesson is entitled, Upside Down. Why upside down? Because there's sometimes where you think that your life is perfect and you're standing on two feet and everything looks hunky-dory and it's going just the way you want and then something happens what they call in Yiddish a knech a, a stick in your wheels and your life turns completely around upside down today's lesson we're going to do a synopsis of what Rebbe Nachman teaches in the second part of Likutei Roran Torah 82 and it, it's called Achorvitz Kedem. He darshins the posuk, the passage that King David says in Psalms that I have been chased in front and from behind. What does Rabbi Nachman learn from front and behind? In front, Rabbi Nachman says things that look like they're going forward. There is a mode in a person's life that's called kesidran, Rabbi Nachman calls it, where everything is going according to fine. You're going, your career is fine, your shalom bite is fine, your health is fine, everything is fantastic. And then there's something that is lo kesidran, that is the opposite of order. This is a concept that comes from soifers. A soifer, when he writes to fill in and mezuzahs, to fill in and mezuzah's halacha la Moshe Misinai, it's a law of Moshe Misinai that have to written in order. In other words, a cipher, he can't go to the end of the line and write a letter and then come back to the beginning. He has to write Shema Yisrael, Shin, Mem, Aleph, Yisrael, Yud, Shin, Rej, Aleph, Lam. And he makes a mistake, he can't go back and correct it. He can erase letters if he didn't come to Hashem's name. But he cannot go back, he can't erase Hashem's name. So if he makes a mistake and he doesn't catch the mistake and he makes Hashem's name, he can't go back and correct it because it has to be written in order. A Megillah and a Sefer Torah don't have to be written in order. You can write a Sefer Torah, you can write Chumash Mois before you write Chumash Breshit. In a Megillah, Seferim, what they do, they start in the middle of the Megillah to get their hand used to it, the size of the writing, and then once it comes out perfect, then the beginning of the Megillah, they make it perfect. They write the beginning of the Megillah at the end when the writing is nicest because when a person buys the Megillah, they open up the Megillah in the beginning. They see the writing in the beginning. And you see well, always the writing in the beginning of a Megillah is nicer than it's writing at the end of the Megillah. Okay. So when life proceeds according to our plan, our plan, what we perceive as la dolce vita, the sweet life, what we perceive as good, this is called kesidran, in order. When life becomes topsy-turvy, it is out of order. Rabbi Nachman teaches us this is very, the Torah 82 in the second part of Likutei Moran is very much connected to Torah 6 in the first part of Likutei Moran and to Torah 4 in the first part of Likutei Moran. What's the connection between Torah 6 in the first part and Torah 82? They talk about real tshuva. Rabbi Nachman talks about real tshuva. What is the tshuva that we all have to do, and especially in Elul? Okay, now we're at the very end of Tammuz. Elul is a short run. Elul is five, five weeks away. We're close to Elul. We have uh, one more week of Tammuz, four weeks of Av, and then it's tshuva season. What they say is like in the baseball, they, they, they call it the preseason. All right, we're in the tshuva preseason. The practice game, but every person that, that does tshuva every day is in good shape. But we have to prepare ourselves for this. What is it we have to do tshuva for? We have to do tshuva all the time for emuna, because all of us perceive that something is good and other things are not good. In other words, we would say, okay, somebody gives you a check for $500,000, that's good. Someone that loses $500,000, that's not good. Rav Sholem says, what is the only difference between when Mashiach comes, 
and between now. What's, what's the only difference? People think that when Mashiach comes, that all of a sudden everything is going to be hunky-dory. There's still going to be challenges in Shalom Bayit. There's still going to be challenges in educating children. There's going to be challenges in everything. But the only difference is that when Mashiach comes, everyone will know that everything Hashem does is for the very best. People write me all the time and they ask, are there any exceptions to that rule? There are no exceptions to that rule. Everything happens to the best, and we're going to prove it right now. And I, some people, and a lot of times I get this when uh, I have a couple of call, when people come to see me and, and when people write letters, and oftentimes they perceive, I don't know, many people perceive that I, I live a hunky-dory life. Oh, laser, everything by you is fine, and this and that. People know you, everything is wonderful, and you know, I could put my problem, I got a real, I have an acute problem, I have an acute health problem, and I have an acute income problem. Okay. I always pray to Hashem, always pray to Hashem that I should not teach a single word that I haven't internalized and think twice about before something comes out of my mouth. And one of the secrets in my translation of Rav Shalom's, everyone in books, there's not a thing that I translate that I don't pray about that Hashem helped me internalize it, and at least if it's not completely mine, at least I'm working on it. Okay, maybe I might be there, but I'm working on it. For example, I'm working on it. It's a lifelong project. But then we get tested. We're talking about upside down. Why I'm saying upside down? Because while I had lots of time to do, hate people do, to do personal prayer this past week, because for those that don't know, last week I spent a few days in the cardiac ward in Leniato Hospital. And talk about having the wool pulled out upside down where in one instant, my life completely changed. What had happened? I'll tell you the story exactly what happened. I promised people, they wrote a lot of letters, and rather than answering letters, I promised people to tell, to tell exactly what happened. It was last week on it goes back at two weeks. Two weeks ago, I was doing my twice a week wind sprints. And I was in the height of physical fitness. For my age, off the charts, the, 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 the charts don't even go up to 67. Okay, for the 40 years old, I was getting the highest scores, excellent and everything. Okay, when I was doing wind sprint, in order to do anything that understands about the way that athletes work, and I, I work in a very professional type. I'm also a qualified physical, physical trainer, a fitness trainer, and I do a percentage of what's called maximum heart rate, 80% maximum heart rate. And I got a new heart monitor the last time we were in America, and I started using it. And I said, wait a second, I'm jogging, and I see my heart rate is what my maximum heart rate should be. It shouldn't be that. At my age, maximum heart rate should be about 155 to 160 for my age, not going to calculations. Jogging, I was getting close to that, 153. When I would run, I would hit 175, and I could still talk to someone while I'm running, when I do a fast pace. When I would do a full throttle sprint, according to the heart monitor, I was hitting 210 and 215. And I said, wait a second, this heart monitor, it must be good, but I, I, I got a good one. It's a, it's a Polar, Polar's a wonderful company. And I was talking to one of my sons. I got two sons that are rabbis and one son that's a physical therapist. And I was talking to my son who's a, a four sports physical therapist in Toronto. And he says to me, he's a graduate of Wingate Institute. Here in, in Israel, they have the best sports college in the world, or at Wingate Institute, it's fantastic. And they have a whole faculty of sports medicine. So he said, ah, but why don't you go to Wingate and they give an athlete a complete checkout. They'll tell you what your VO2 max is and what your aerobic max and your anaerobic, all these things. And you get exact profile on your body that no doctor can give you. EKG and stress tests and everything. So I made an appointment to Wingate and I went to Wingate Institute in Netanya a week ago Monday, nine days ago, a week ago Monday. And they start doing the test and check my body fat. This is off the charts for your age, you're fantastic. And the body mass, everything, balance, coordination, great, 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 great. Last test, the stress test. Put the EKG on me, and they put me on the treadmill. And they start turning on the heat of the treadmill. We didn't get past the walk. 
It was a quick walk. We're six miles an hour on a treadmill. And at six, six kilometers an hour, excuse me, six kilometers an hour, not six miles an hour, excuse me, six m- kilometers an hour. And the cardiologist that was running, she called a head cardiologist, come quick, we got to stop this. I said, what's going on? And she, her face was ashen white. And she didn't want to say, what's going on? And they told me, lie down. He said, gently. They took off the electrodes off me. They said, lie down. Don't move. I said, what do you mean? I'm under arrest? <laughs> this is, Wingate is a police station. And I, I'm joking with them. I don't move. And they look, and he looks at the EKG, and his face turns white. So what's going on? A normal person's heart goes bump, bump bump on an EKG, it goes up when it bumps, then it goes a straight line, goes up in a bump. My heart was syncopating like a Hasidic nigun. Bump, 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 just like a Hasidic nigun. And you get one second, have three beats, and it would skip two seconds with no beat. And they're looking at a regular, they said that rare they see some, their heartbeat so irregular. And to make a long story short, what regulates the pace, there was nothing to regulate my pace from going through the roof. And they said I was in imminent danger. And they said, don't move. They would not let me carry my gym bag. I said, very gently, changed my clothes, had to lie down. They called an ambulance. And I said, from Ashdod, at least either be by my house or Yerushalayim, you know, where do I work? No, 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 no. You're going to Leniato, the closest hospital. It's in Kiret Sons in Netanya. Okay, so they sent me to the Neo Hospital, and they tried bringing down the heart rate. Couldn't do it with chemicals. And they said, okay, you got to have electric shots to your heart to try and bring your heart back to what's called sinus normal heart beating. I said, no way. No way. And first had to call my Rav, Rav Shalom. Told him exactly what their prognosis was, what this, what that. And they continued, said, delay that for the time being. And they wanted to give me all kinds of heavy drugs. Said, no way on that too. Because there's a drug called Coumadin that thins out a person's blood. And when you thin out a person's blood, this is what they said. They said, your heart is in danger of clots. Okay, so you have to make sure that your blood is thin. But if you take this Coumadin, it, it, you can't take it together with vitamin K. And if you can't take it with vitamin K, it means you can't eat anything with chlorophyll in. So no green veggies, no cucumbers, no olive oil, no avocado, no nothing. <laughs> I said, I eat natural. So you're going to keep my heart okay and make me anemic. So what are we done? In other words, I was two and a half days, I was doing two things in the hospital, arguing with the doctors and trying to make other people happy. Okay, teaching people in the cardiac ward, you know, and they say, here, they got this... This clown from Breslov has got this smile on his face, you know, and they, they thought that, you know, not used to seeing people like that. All right, so I know Hashem was testing me in Amunah, but to make a long story short, what it is, is I cannot, and I used to be fast, very, very fast. I was a very fast sprinter, and I would powerlifting, I took myself off of powerlifting, Hashem took me off of it, because I was getting injured all the time. And I figured, why, why is Hashem getting me injured? I know the tech, I know how to lift. I do a good warm-up. But still, here a muscle would be pulled. Here that. I was off of that. And now, I've had to take, I'm not allowed to do anything more than a, a brisk walk. And my exercise, like Pilates, slow, easy, or Tai Chi, or we don't do yoga because of all the problems. There's halakha problems, big halakha problems with, yon, with yoga. But Pilates, Pilates is a very... Nice thing. Yesterday I, I did Pilates and I measured my heart and uh, it didn't go over 92, 95, which is good. So I have to keep my heart artificially well below 160. And the Chinese medical doctor today that I saw with this is doing things with the herbs. I'm taking care of myself, but I'm not doing the route of conventional medicine and not the route of electric. But uh, told me keep it below 130. In other words, do 80% of what should be your max. And we're doing, I'm, I'm taking Shibu Hashem. I spent three hours, very special, very special uh, doctor of Chinese medicine, naturopath, and she devoted three hours to me. 
and made up a special herb cocktail to take care of herself. Okay, but here's one day I go to take a checkup, an athlete's checkup, and I was expecting to come home with a new workout regimen, how I could keep myself in super dynamite shape, doing 45 minutes a day because I don't have any more time than that, and need to be in good shape because of all our trips and around the world, I have to have very good stamina. And then, boom, find myself in the emergency ward, hooked up to heart machines, with people telling me, I don't want to repeat what the doctor said, what I'm an imminent candidate for, okay? Because Rav Shalom says, you're working for me and we're both working for the Bani Shalom, okay? And he decides what life is. And you've been going around with it anyway, you just now discovered it. They discovered it and it's scared, so we'll continue it to 120 years. Rav Shalom has a worse cardiac problem than I do. And the doctors told me to convince him to have open heart surgery seven years ago. And he didn't. He did some kind of stint. Rebbe Vadya told him to do a little stint and be over with Rebbe Vadya of saintly and blessed memory. And Rav Shalom and Hashem is going strong. And Bukh Hashem will go strong. We hang up our track shoes. Okay, Hashem doesn't want us to do that anymore. Okay, fine. More in Amuna. But a person's whole thinking. Everything is thinking. The, the whole psychological deal is when you know that you know, you're, you're in top shape on one day, and the next day, wait a second, I really must thank Hashem for every heartbeat. Really must thank Hashem for every heartbeat. And do, and, and, and it's not much time to do much else when thanking Hashem for every breath and every heartbeat. But I promise you, beloved brothers and sisters, I promise you that I've got a smile on my face, and I feel great, and people are amazed. People are amazed. What the doctor told me, I'm not going to say what the natural doctor told me, and she's a natural doctor. She is a kosher Jewish woman. She's a Reisha Mayim Jewish woman. That's why I trust her. And everything is in accordance with the Rambam. You know, she does Chinese medicine. We say, Chochma Segoyim. We believe. Torah Segoyim. We don't believe. Okay? But Chinese medicine, a lot of their Eurasia Mayim naturopaths that do Chinese medicine. Okay. She told me I got to take care of myself. And she told me about weaknesses in my heart, weaknesses in my blood. Okay, but we'll, we'll do it. We had a complete change of lifestyle. Complete change of lifestyle. From one day to the next. It's all for the best. And I feel I've never had greater happiness in my life than all for the best. Everything Hashem does is for the best. And Hashem wants me to put more and more, more concentration and to the neshama, and less concentration into the body. The reason I learned this, that could help people. A lot of people come with, with spiritual problems, and to be able to help a person, and to adjust their, what they're eating, and to do the goof and nefesh, they go together. The body and the soul, they go together. But this Hashem wanted something for me, and there was some inner work in myself. What did I do when I wasn't making people laugh in Leniato? I was doing shuva the whole time doing shuva and when i do in shuva hashem gave me big answers laser my beloved son you got to correct this you got to correct that you got to correct that one thing in my davening in my torah learning one thing one by one had this not happened to me i would have gone out of the world when my time was up never make these corrections and come up to the heavenly court, Shnuki, look what's wrong with you. Look what's wrong with you. And Hashem is a loving father, and Hashem doesn't want us to get embarrassed in the next world. Hashem wants to take care of us in this world. I promise you, anyone, in, sign a paper, any difficulty that you're having in life, it's all for the best, why is Hashem giving you difficulty? Many people, an average template letter I get, I'm a God-fearing individual and I eat kosher and I keep Shabbat and I send my kids to religious schools and why is Hashem doing this to me? You know, with, in Hebrew it's called taromet. It's a tone of complaint. Complaint. Hashem, why are you doing it? It's not like, Hashem, why are you doing this to me? Hashem, what do I need to learn? There's a complete different way. You're allowed to ask Hashem, why are you doing it to me? 
Okay, but the Hashem, what do I need to understand? Now here's the thing what we need to know. What do we do when life is topsy-turvy? When one day you're up, the next day you're down. When life becomes upside down, all of a sudden, classic example, 2008. Had a lot of invested brokers. With 2008, people that were rolling in money, boom, lost it all. You now have no more money. You no longer have $100 million in the bank. Last night, the guy had $100 million in the bank. Now, no longer. All the markers have been called in. The stocks are down, this and that. He cannot get a job packing groceries. All he knows is investments. And his investment companies closed down. Nobody needs it because other investment closes have come down. And banks are closing down. And real estate is closing down. What do you do? What do you do? That's it. Real estate agents now are coming back up. But a real estate agent, example, in Miami, rolling in money. Next day, no agency, no money, no clients, debts. Debts. Now what do you do? Topsy-turvy. What's Hashem doing? What's Hashem doing? Hashem gives each one of us, each one of us, messages. When does Hashem turn up the volume? Because the messages were there. When you look back at the change you must do now, that there were signs, slow down, you didn't pay attention to slow down. Your wife or your husband said something to you, you didn't pay attention to it because you didn't want to pay attention to it. But now, <laughs> this is Hashem talking. Okay, so what do we do with this drastic wake-up call when life goes upside down? It could be a nasty divorce. It could be a sickness. It could be a cardiac arrest, chas v'sholem. It could be anything, chas when I say everything, chas v'sholem. It could be all of a sudden a child that goes off the derech. Chas v'sholem, people are family, and this is something that happens, see this all the time. What is Hashem doing to me? What is Hashem doing to me? Okay, let's stop. Time out on the field. Let us remember three significant facts, and before we think of anything, before we make any decision, we have to remind ourselves the three practical principles of Amuna. First of all, it's from Hashem. Ain od milvado. There is no one else. There is no one else, nobody but Hashem. It's not your boss. It's not the doctor. It's not the bacteria. It's not the virus. It's not the neighbor. It's not the teacher. It's not the Rebbe. It's not anyone else. It's only Hashem. Only one Hashem. Anything that happens... We do not attribute any power to anyone but Hashem. This says the Gemara in fourth chapter of Avoid Zorah. This is the mistake of the people that do idolatry, that they attribute powers to the creations, powers that Hashem imbibed in those creations. Natural. Hashem gave the sun the power to give heat. And if a person exposes himself to sun, he gets vitamin D. But if a person has exposed himself too much to the sun, he gets a sunburn. All right, but let's suppose a person goes and he's got a problem with rickets. He's got a vitamin D shortage. The doctor says, go, get a half hour of sunlight a day. So he exposes himself to the sun. Now he feels better. And vitamin D, no more problems. So now what does he do? He bows down to the sun. This is the classic template of idolatry. No, nincompoop. Hashem created the sun. You don't bow down to the aspirin or bow down to the antibiotic or bow down to the sun or you don't bow down to a, a piece of liver that put iron in your bloodstream. It's all Hashem. It's all Hashem. But people make a mistake. They see the sun. They see the piece of liver. They see the cucumber. They don't see Hashem. They don't see Hashem because they don't look for Hashem and it's not convenient for them for Hashem. What is the whole, the different movements that go away from Torah Judaism? All the different, different shame, different, you know, in chemistry, you have pure chemicals. There's a list of pure chemicals. Anytime you have an adjective before a chemical, it's one of two things. It's either the chemical and a compound, which is not the original chemical anymore. Okay. Chlorine, chloride, is not the same thing when you add sodium to it. It becomes salt. Okay, chloride is no longer chloride when you add sodium. Sodium chloride. It's not chloride anymore. It's sodium. All right. It comes completely different. When you take Judaism and you add such and such type of Judaism, 
wherever you plug in the name, there's all types of different names. It's watered down Judaism. It's changed Judaism. There's one thing, Judaism. Judaism, that's it. Judaism is a Torah that Moshe Rabbeinu brought us down on Mount Sinai that's got 613 mitzvahs, and it's the written law, which is elaborated in the oral law, which is the Mishnah and the Gomorrah that evolved from that to Shulchan Aruch. And we have the Code of Jewish Law. That's where it comes from. Call, trace back to Moshe Rabbeinu. This is something we are not at liberty of changing. Okay, we only have to see Hashem. Only have to see Hashem. So people want their own agendas. Now, the Torah says you can't have your own agenda. You have to do Hashem's agenda because Hashem is the manufacturer and Hashem knows what's good for you. So if you want to be happy, happy is health of soul, and you want to be healthy, health of body, then you have to follow the Torah. It's very, very simple. Very, very simple. But people want to do what they want to do, and they depart from the Torah. And this is a breakdown in Muna. As soon as you have the slightest breakdown in Muna, the slightest watering down of one's Judaism, the first mitzvah gets watered down. What's the first mitzvah? That's a Muna. Anuch Yishem the first of the Ten Commandments. And I'd say the first of the 613 mitzvahs is pre via that we learn and be fruitful and multiply in Elmish Breshi. But when we talk about the 13 principles of Amuna and the first of the Ten Commandments, that's a mitzvah of Amuna. Number one in the top ten, mitzvah of Amuna. We can't have this watered down. We have to have full and complete Amuna, what Rabbi Nachman says in Torah Dalet. Rabbi Nachman says, She'odom yoidea she'kol meroisav heim letovato, zot abchina me'en olam abba. Rabbi Nachman says like this, the beginning of Torah Dalit. He says, when a person knows that everything in his life is for the very best, this is an aspect of the world to come. Rav Sholem stresses this all the time. And Rav Sholem says, you can taste the world to come in this world. That's where Rav Sholem has a song he sings. O emuna, o gehenom, in emuna yesh gehenom. O emuna, o gehenom. It's either emuna or it's gehenom. Whatever you want to make it choose. If you want to live a life of, of Ganeidin, choose emuna. And life of purgatory, it's a lack. Why? Because when a person's life goes upside down, he blames himself. He blames his wife, he blames his boss, he blames the neighbor, he blames his kids, he blames everything else. When it's all Hashem, Hashem say, you're not looking at the right thing. So now let's emphasize those three practical, these three practical principles of Ebunah that we all must activate a time of crisis, a time of personal crisis. Number one, this crisis comes from Hashem. Already. What it means to come from Hashem? Okay, I'm not going to blame myself. I'm not going to blame anyone else. I could be in crisis and I could be at peace in myself. I mean, Christ would be at peace in myself. All right. One thing, and, and I had to do this very serious. I had to do this very serious. I mean, connected, and you know, you're having a cardiac crisis. That's a pretty major crisis. Okay. I can't remember the last major crisis I had since then was uh, to go back to, to wartime. It's a long time since I've been under a major crisis like this. There was something close when I had a very sick grandson that they also Hashem did amazing, saved amazingly, Bo Hashem, a good shaliach, a good surgeon that was a wonderful shaliach. Okay, but really, for me personally, on my own flesh and blood, that's, hadn't had a test like that in a long, long time. Baruch Hashem. A long time. Since the last war I participated in. Okay, so right thing. So what, what saved me? Hold it. Stop. Where's this coming from? It's like everything else. Ain't old milvado this from Hashem. Ah, now wait a second. That's number one. One A. Who is Hashem? Who is Hashem? What do we say? Avinu malkeinu. Avinu shashamayim. The Torah says, Boni matel That's my tati. That's my father. My father in heaven. So I said to my father doing, there's no greater loving father in the world. He's a loving father. 
Okay, so hold it. This already changes the picture. Whatever is happening to me, as logical as it may seem, it's from a loving father. It's a gift from a loving father. Now, you imagine your child that you really love. What do you want for your child? Happiness and health. Want the good. All right, this is, this is all from the father. Okay, that's 1A. Let's go on to 2. Principle number two. He said principle number one, everything was shown. Principle number two, everything is for the best. After you read the Garden of Amunah, read the Garden of Gratitude. Everything is for the best. No exception to the rule. Everything comes from Hashem, no exception to the rule. So principle number one, everything comes from Hashem, no exception to the rule. Everything is for the good because Hashem is a loving father and he only does good. Rav Shalom also sings, Ein Rabba Olam. Ein shum rabbe olam. Like they say, Rabbi Nachman, the original song, Ein shum yeush ba olam. Rabbi Nachman sings, Ein shum rabbe olam. Rabbi Shalom sings. I said a change. It's for Rabbi Shalom, Rabbi Nachman. <laughs> Nothing. It's all good. It's all good. Third practical principle of Muna that we must internalize. And we have to internalize these principles so much Okay, commander under fire, that's where they got to go. When you say, man your battle stations, Bukh Hashem. They have oh, a very, very distinguished guest, one of the highest Jewish officers in the American Navy, fleet commander, commander Neil, he's with us, just made Aliyah. Uh, commander Neil, his Hebrew name is Nossen. What's your mother's name? They see every blessing, Muna. He just retired from the Navy, the equivalent to a full colonel. The Navy's equivalent to a full colonel. And he commanded, he commanded a, a, a fleet with thousands and thousands of sailors. Okay? And now he's here, Bukh Hashem, in Eretz Yisrael, and Chut Shechesed, strengthened as a Muna. And we're honored to have you, and Bukh Hashem. But I'm saying, when I say a man battle stations, this gentleman knows what the battle stations are. Okay, and that's it. When we man our battle stations, weapon number one, it's all from Hashem. Weapon number two, it's all for the best. Weapon number three, principle number three, that it all has a purpose. This on a crisis, boom, 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 instinct. I got to, it's from Hashem. Hashem's my loving father, it's all for the good. This is all for the best. My instinct got to be great. I can't say, oh, I'm upset. Wait a second. Have a smile on your face. Smiling? Okay. That's what people, they're not used to the, the, the doctors and nurses. You're smiling? In the cardiac ward, you're smiling? Yeah, it's all from Hashem. And speak of Muna. You spread a Muna wherever you go. You spread a Muna wherever you go. That's all. Ah, you know what happens when you spread a Muna? Hashem continues letting you spread a Muna. But this is the only thing. If I had not had my Amuna that I thank Hashem and I thank my beloved Rav, Rav Shalom for, and there's not a day, I can promise you, there's not a day where Laser Brody doesn't ask Hashem for a Muna for more Muna. Because there's no limit. When I, I look at the level of a Muna of Rav Sholem, my beloved Rav, and I look at mine, hey, wait a second, little kid, you got a lot of growing to do. Bo Hashem, thank you, Hashem, that enabled me to bring this beautiful light to the English world, English speaking world. But uh, we all have to strengthen ourselves. Everyone, this is not a competition sport. This is competing with ourselves, each one with ourselves. In other words, what is the name of the game? The name of the game, and this is the purpose in life. And this lets us understand our crisis. If we don't understand what we're doing on earth, we do not understand why we have crisis in life. What is the purpose on earth, bottom line, to get closer to Hashem? Hashem gives us that's the greatest gift on earth to get closer to Hashem. When we don't have the brains to do it on our own, Hashem helps us. And Hashem knows how each one can get closer. Hashem knows how Steve Gardner can get closer. And Hashem knows how Commander Neil does. Hashem knows how <laughs> Counselor Yonatan can get closer. That every single person knows exactly how he can get closer. And everyone Achilles heel. The more we strengthen ourselves on our own accord in Emuna, 
then the less we need wake-up calls that we try our best to get close to Hashem. Really try our best. And we think we're trying our best, we're not trying our best. I know one thing is this, my whole life in the last seven days, it's then completely, I have not yet digested the changes I need to make. I know the changes I need to make, and they're drastic. They're drastic. They're drastic. It's all good. It is all good. And we're not talking a place. I know Hashem is giving me the privilege to be able to talk from the heart. And probably I'm talking from the heart. Okay? This is talk from the heart. And now I can see it. It's all for the good. Whatever you have, whatever you have. Okay, is anybody, I've, I've heard people, shall invite problems and this and that. Anybody want to change a problem for a cardiac problem? Anybody want to swap? No, you don't want to swap? Anybody? I got a, I got a cardiac problem. Anybody want to swap something? Financial problem? Uh-uh. We all have our own peckle. Why? And it won't help. It won't help me. It won't help you. Because Hashem gives you the problem in life that's going to bring you closer to Hashem. Because you know there's no other way you could do it. Hashem brings me the problem in life that's going to be no, that for Laser Brody this is a showstopper. And now Hashem's got my full attention, full attention. I thought Hashem had my full attention before. Uh-uh. Far from it. And now, after a couple of days of tshuva, and there's nothing to do in hospital but to make other people happy than do tshuva. Okay, not much. It's difficult, especially in, in cardiology, that there are people after heart attacks and there are people that think they're, they're going to die in another minute. And every, even people that visit me, they heard howling all the time. Nurse, doctor, save me. I feel, you know, any tiny little thing in the chest, they right away think they're going out. It was difficult to learn. It was very difficult to learn. What I could do is close my eyes and do Mishnayas by heart and, and talk to Hashem. That, that was the limit. Didn't get much learning done that, but got a lot of tshuva done. A lot of tshuva. This is what we do when our life turns upside down. We remember these three life-saving points. Everything is from Hashem, and it's all for the best, and it's all for a purpose. Now we take these three points and we apply it individually. Hashem, now that I know it's from you, now that I know it's for the best, now that I know it's for a purpose, Hashem, let me process the message, what I need to learn from this. Once you do that, Hashem takes away. You don't need the problem anymore. Hashem will take the problem away. This is your cure. This is the cure to your debts. This is the cure to your shalom bite. This is the cure if you need practical help in the shalom bite. Learn the garden of peace. Learn the garden of wisdom. You need practical help with getting rid of the debts. Learn the uh, garden of riches. Okay? For, for each one. And we know this is the way to handle a crisis. This is the Amuna way of handling a crisis. We have to remember a crisis. It's all for the best. This is real emuna, Rebbe Nachman says. This is real tshuva when we are capable and able of internalizing the fact that everything Hashem does in our lives is all for the very best. All for the very best. Okay, Buch Hashem. With that said, I've got an announcement to make. Announcement to make. That in part of our thing, we're going to have a new online shiur. It's not going to be live. Online shiur. It's going to be taped in the yeshiva after the koil shiur, 12 o'clock. We, we say, if everyone, you're in Yerushalayim, you want to learn, in the Chut Chesed English-speaking koil, we have every Wednesday afternoon, at, uh, every Wednesday late morning, 11.30 to 12 noon, there is a shiur. It's open to the public. You're more invited. This, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the women. This is the men's coil. Okay, man thing. The women's are more than welcome to have you to the Armuna shiur at 7 p.m. in the evening. Okay, this will not be broadcast live. The coil shiur is by, by videotape. The coil shiur is from 11.30 to 12 o'clock, and it is Gomorrah Halachic Iyun with ends up with a bit of Hasidus, the inner, what's the inner meaning of a halacha. Okay, you can ask the Koilo guys. I think they enjoy the shiur, Puch Hashem, and uh, you're invited to that. After that, we're going to make a new shiur, 
going to be taped. We will be teaching inside the Garden of Wisdom. The Garden of Wisdom is one of the most important books Rav Sholem ever wrote. The Garden of Amuna has got the big headlines, Garden of Peace, the second biggest headlines. The Garden of Wisdom is a real path to happiness. And we're going to be teaching that book from 12 to 12.30, 12 to 12.30 noon, and that will, the film would be replayed on YouTube, and it's going to be replayed on, on laser beams. Okay, that's something else. Let's see, new things. So we're, we're trying to increase Torah, increase Emunah, and th this is what we want to do, is make more, then use our energies. Okay, with that said, I want to bless everyone everyone that we should be able to get close to Hashem without crises. Hashem shouldn't need Shalom Bite problems. He shouldn't need divorces. He shouldn't need off the derech kids. He shouldn't need health challenges. He shouldn't need income challenges. That every one of you should have every single success in life. But if Chas Shalom, you get tested. Say, Chas Shalom In Shemayim, what do they say? What do you say? Chas V'sholem for? A test is good. But we say, like Reb Zusha says, Reb Zusha, the Reb Elimelech, Noam Elimelech's brother, we say in Shachrit, V'sigmaleinu l'chasodim toivim. Hashem, give us good loving kindnesses. So our sages say, what do you mean good loving kindnesses? Loving kindnesses are good. Reb Zusha says, no. We should, everything Hashem does is loving kindness. But Hashem should give us loving kindness that we perceive as good, that we understand as good. We know, okay, Hashem is bringing this person close to him by, by financial problems or by health problems. <laughs> okay, and Shemaim, they know that's good. No, but I bless every, like a Reb Zusha's blessing, that Hashem should bless you with what you think is good for you. But if, chas v'sholem, excuse me, in Shemaim, that you don't get that, that you'd be able to fall back on your emuna. And there's one thing, emuna is like a trampoline. When you fall down on a trampoline of emuna, you know what happens? You bounce back even higher than you were. This is the secret, okay? And that's the secret to living in a topsy-turvy world and to living in an upside, could be upside down, downside situation, upside down. And to go in like what Newton says, We'll take Newton. We said we, the wisdom of the nations we believe. Newton said equal every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Okay. We elaborate. Newton was almost right. In spirituality, every action leads to a greater opposite reaction. This is in the Gemara. In other words, when you get knocked down and you come back with the Munah, you're stronger than you were. And I'll prove to you this. I'll prove to you this in the material world. Okay. If you know anything about metallurgy and you know anything about welding, a piece of metal breaks. Okay, here, Commander. You got guys painting and welding on the ship. They weld and paint all day long. Okay, when they're not in war. When you take that broken piece of metal and you weld it, it is stronger than the initial the metal. In other words, if that breaks, it's going to break somewhere else and not going to break on the weld. The weld is stronger. The same thing with the Muna. And so a neshama is when a neshama gets broken, like the Kotzke Rebbe said, there's nothing more whole than a broken heart. When a broken heart comes back together because of talking to Hashem and makes a spiritual weld that a Muna does to a broken heart, it is now stronger than it was before the weld. Okay, that's what a Muna does for us. And Hashem strengthens us. And Hashem is going to strengthen all of us to such an extent that we're going to be ready spiritually and physically to rebuild the holy temple and to receive Mashiach and help with all the ingathering of the exiles that have come soon to a rebuilt Eretz Yisrael speaking in our days. Amen. God bless every single blessing. Mm -hmm.